Hey guys, long time no see. I have been up and down a crazy roller coaster. So sorry for no updates on my saving page. I'll be back in the full swing hopefully very soon. I'm still doing the commissions, just at a very slow pace, and I haven't been able to keep up with a lot of messages. So I'm sorry for any uh, delayed in messages. Uh, on my Facebook page and whatnot, but I am still doing commissions just at a very different pace as I was before. Um, that being said, today I received a package that I ordered from a good friend, Leon, over in Melbourne from Jawa's Junkyard, and that is the Odin's Wrath. This arrived today. So I'm gonna do an unboxing. It's not gonna be a very detailed one, uh, a lengthy one. I will go into detail as much as I can. Um, and yeah, let's check this out. As far as I'm aware, I haven't seen any pop up on order, so I may be one of the first to receive. I hope so. Um, yeah, so let's do this. sticker for his logo that I was uh, lucky enough to design myself he got me to do so it looks pretty damn good all right have a look here. bubble wrap there's some packing peanuts so I'll set the main hilt aside let's unpack Look at the last. Down here. So what we have is the shroud. Nicely etched. Doesn't seem to have any fixings for the shroud. So I'm assuming this stage that you may want me to glue it in place. Let's see. Here we have a vinyl decal, which looks like it's meant for the um, for the saber itself, for the design on the grip section. And that's fucking really good. I'm a sign writer by trade, so I deal with stickers all the time, and that is a very fine cut. That is really detailed and the, down the bottom there is tiny I've done a good job with that so yeah Be using that now right, I got a pack here of greeblies here we have what looks like to be the brass pin section where's the camera there the two brass pins check that out a bit later here we seem to have a few gems for the aesthetics on the outside. Got a blue one and an orange one. Well, the looks of it for me, is that a crystal? 3D printed blue crystal. I'd have to assume. And then a bit of clear, looks like formed plastic. I'm not sure what that's for. Again, I don't, I don't know how to assemble the sucker yet, so we'll have a look. Got some machined, CNC machined, uh, extra greebies for the grip section. You can see the pattern there. Yeah, it's done quite nicely. It's nice and clean. Another part for the grip section goes in. Another part for the grip section. So I'm not 100% familiar with the Augustine um, lightsaber. I know what it looks like, but not in detail. So I'm gonna to have to check some stuff out and see whether this has to be painted or I polish that up a bit more because it's in very. That looks like it's been. Oh, I'm gonna assume here. It's satin finish, so it's been coated. Yeah, it's been like jury coated or something, powder coated. Um, another greebly. Guessing that's where the blue um, gem goes in. Ooh, not my peanuts. More peanuts, more peanuts. 
plenty of packing peanuts. Don't have to worry about anything getting scratched or damaged, that's for sure. Here we got oh, a plaque of um, the Leon's also done for us. Display plaque. That's 3D printed by the looks of it. He's painted it. Yeah, it's not rubbing buff. It's painted. He's painted the surface of it gold. A little bit rustic. Like it's come from a junkyard a little bit. Don't mind that. I like that. Anything else in here? Just packing peanuts in a scroll of some sort. Telling me what my fate is. Ah, that's handy. It's 3D printed some uh, little holders for the, for the paperwork scroll. That's cool. Neat little touch. I like that. Alright, so these are just instructions. What he's done here. He's just printed out on a decent bit of paper. So you can see how it all goes. So far, nothing shown for the crystal. What I'm assuming is a crystal, fiber crystal, and a um. Oh, I don't know concentration too. I'm not sure what it is. But yeah, there's an awesome little logo down here again. Cheeky mention. All right, cool. So I'll show you this hilt now. Let's get a bit closer for this. So this is it, the main hilt. Mitter. Uh, oh, Greebly oh, socket one, we'll call it. He looks like there's mounting plates for the shroud, which I'm not sure what the height would be for that where you sit it, but I'm just gonna guess about there. Let's do that. Yeah, we'll do that. Sits off nicely, it's nice and square, it's not it's not on a bit of an angle or anything, so he's done it's precision, precisionly machined, so that's good. So we're not sure how it's gonna be fixed. I don't know if where oh, we'll have a chat with Leon. See what the what he's done for his other one or his prototype. If it was drilled, tapped, and uh, socket screwed in, or if it's just epoxied. In, I'm not too sure. We'll have to check that out. But yeah, um, I'm guessing. Yep, comes apart. Middle section comes off. So I was wondering how he got this veneer wood on. It's a veneer. No, it's been it's been painted on or well, dipped. I'm gonna say dipped. Let's see if it comes apart again. No, nah. I don't know. I'll have to talk with Leon because I'm fascinated how that was done. I'm, I'm assuming dipped, seamless, near seamless, and it's very shiny and I can kind of see a print pattern in it. Yeah, not bad. I wouldn't have gloss, so I might hit that with some, um, some matte or some satin to make it look more wood, not so glossy. After I weather it all up, so there's the emitter. Let's get up close here. This fucking lighting. I'll tell you what. Ooh. That's probably too much lighting. But yeah, it's very glossy. It's a nice finish. It's a great finish for a gloss finish, but I would prefer my wood to be... My wood to be satin. That's just my preference. So this midsection comes off too. I'm guessing there's a vent. Yeah, not sure if the speaker is going to be going up that end or not, but more holes the merrier. Again, nicely machined. It's all clean. All the threads are very clean so far when I've disassembled it, even the ones with the chunks taken out for switch holes and whatnot, still clean. The pommel. Sound vents all through here in a nice little pattern. And on the bottom, again, machined and cleaned to a nice finish. And this is the bottom grip section. So there's the insert one. Um, 
agreeably insert to I'm guessing switch and then another where the CNC part will go in and then there's another one I think there's a slight indent there where the switchboard kind of LED module thing imitation will go in I'm assuming yep it sits in now I'm just going to assume that that will get epoxied into place so yeah not too bad so there's that and let's put these suckers just roughly in a place I'll try and hold them in a shape for us need to open the damn bags up still sorry guys didn't want to waste time not so lengthy video is going to be lengthy I think that's right it goes back there that drops through a top and a bottom who knows just drop it in drop it like a top creepily one this is pretty much it so far there's that goes all the way down the metal insert there and it's hollow through there so I'm assuming so I've seen the rough because I had to draw the um, saber for his logo I'm guessing there's you're going to be able to see the chassis or insert in there so it'll show you like internals so that's not a bad thing I kind of like that as long as they don't protrude out if he like wires and that you have to do a very neat install whoever does it um, I should have assembled this first back together Again, the wood finish is very clean. So I actually haven't seen hydro dipping in person before. Always recommend it rather than wrapping stuff because it's fucking easier because I don't have to do it. Pommel's back on. I think that's right. Yeah. There goes. Come in. Come in. Guess that's for an LED. That's pretty much it. I can't get the pin in. It's blinding me. I can't get the pins in because I'll fall out. But it's pretty much the rough idea of how it will look. Assembled. It's a nice size. It's uh, a little bit more robust than I thought it would be. Just around the grip section mainly. But that's what happens when you have that many greeblies on there. But it is it's nicely made. It is very clean machining. I believe you got everything done in Australia, so I'm very impressed. I like it. I am intrigued to get into discussion with you, Leon, about a future project. Yeah, I like the grip. It's yeah, it's comfortable. It's comfortable. I reckon it'll be good with a nice satin finish on there for me, just for my liking. It's cool. Impressive, most impressive. So I'll compare it in size to uh, Hemi Templeton's uh, Mirage. So I've got one of his two that I still need to install for myself. I'm gonna put my finger out. This is his here. Nicely, nicely machined. Switch buttons, switch buttons, switch holes. So in comparison size wise, Let's zoom back out here. It is shorter, which is good. I don't like ridiculously long heels, but this is still comfortable. It's very comfortable because it's got a massive grip on it. So you can get two firm hands on there, no worries. This is comfortable though as well, so I'm not trying to be biased at all. No, it's good. That's it. So it's about that short. This one is a bit rounder with the grip. 
than this one. This one, I can get my thumb around past my index fingers, nail. This one's just touching. So, all in all, I'm very happy with this and I look forward to installing it. Let's do a blade test, let's see the tolerance. This is my one inch display blade. Uh, it's my Duodo blade. Yep, that's great. Still got enough tight, it's got a bit of loosey goosey yep, going on. Don't have to worry about. No, that's clean. It's just a bit of, no, from the dipping. Um, very clean. Uh, yeah, the tolerance is on a Solos hold blade holder, such as the TFU2. Too tight for my liking. I love that he likes his tolerances so tight, but it just throws me off because I have to sand down either the emitter or the blade to get it in because it's so damn tight. But um, that was nice, nice fit then. Um, we'll have to put a, there's no pre-drilled uh, retention screws, I've noticed. So that will have to be done by myself. Not that I'm not used to, but it's just something that people plan to invest in one, I have to keep in mind. It'll need its own paint job or weathering job, whatever you want to do. But yeah, we'll have to have a, uh, you have to drill your own and tap your own uh, hole for retention, blade retention, LED retention for the module, and then also chassis retention if you do a standoff chassis or you could do a free sitting one in there. But I'll probably do a, I'll probably do a standoff chassis so it'll be mounted into there. It'll come off so I can take this off, no worries. Don't know how I'll go about doing a switch yet, but I'll worry about that when I get there. Um, yeah, but all in all, I'll, this is great. I'll probably give it, let's say, for his first full metal heel, I'll say a 3.5 out of five. That is nice, there's room for improvement, not in the machining or anything, maybe just slightly in the design for that grip section. It's a little bit, little bit fat for my grip feel like that I like but um that's it is what it is like I'm not going to sit there and go no I want my money back or anything because that I, I've got it and it's it's beautiful it's, it's beautifully beautifully made so it's fine it's just it yeah, for my personal preference I prefer just a slightly thinner grip but a Graflex you grab a Graflex that's fucking thicker than that again so it is what it is. I'm not sure with the proportions of this. So like I said, I'm not 100% familiar with this style saver. So I'm not sure if it's meant to be that thick. Don't know. Um, but that's just my small critique on that. For my personal preference and maybe next time. But I'm sure he might do a demo video anyway coming out. I'm not too sure of how to install the shroud. Because um, obviously... I could figure that out myself, but for anyone that hasn't done DIY savers before or in the game, they will need to know how to put it on. If they don't have somebody doing it for them, they're doing it all themselves. So yeah, you may need to do a video or maybe in the instructions next time if you have a part that's similar to this again, maybe just drop that in the uh, instructions too, just so people are aware. Um, I think that's about it. Everything else seems to be uh, above standards. I'm very stoked to receive this and I'm glad that I'm one of the first to receive one of your first Sabre designs, mate. So yeah, I'm so stoked that there's an Aussie out there doing replicas uh, for the community, not just customs like um, Hemi's doing. Because I love this Sabre. This is a beautiful day. Once this is done, it's going to be one of my favourite jewels, I reckon. It's, it's so solid, so sturdy. And I'm... Um, uh, Looking forward to installing that one too. This one's going to be definitely a shelf queen for me. I will not be smacking this one around. I'll sit up next to my Forced Unleashed from Solo's Hold, Forced Unleashed 2, and then my custom built Star Killer uh, from Forced Unleashed 1, which I built myself from a Graflex 2.0, and my Solo's Hold Luke Return of the Jedi V2. It's going to be up there with, with those. So I hope that is. A uh, great compliment to you, mate, because it's going to be sitting on display with all my prized possessions. So, yeah, thanks for sending that out. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hit like, 
comment, subscribe, do all that kind of jazz that you're supposed to do on YouTube, and thanks for watching. Cheers.